Hi guys, today we're gonna to be giving some thrifted pottery a whole new high-end look. So if you've been around my channel, you know that I love decor, but I love a good deal on it. I have picked up a few vessels over the years, some from Ross Clearance priced at $3, some just recently at the thrift store, and I want to give them a really high-end pottery barn look for a lot less. So I wanted to have sort of a collection. I didn't want everything to be identical. I'm gonna show you guys the pots that I started out with and then we'll get into all the details. So here is some of the pots that I have collected. I've shared these in thrift hauls with you guys. So this one is actually something I bought a long time ago from Home Goods. I think it was $12. I've used it multiple ways and now it's time for a makeover. This one is a thrifted um, vessel I just recently picked up as well as this one with the handles. The large one on the back end is something that I bought probably 12 years ago. It's time for a makeover. And I'm really excited to work with this picture. I thrifted it for $5. And then I wanted to sort of decide what color scheme I was doing on each picture. So I kind of separated them. So the ones on the right are going to be lighter colors. And then the ones over here are actually going to be darker. So after I decided which pots I wanted in different color schemes, I took a few of them outside and started off with some simple spray paint. So for the first few, I am doing black. So this is just a flat black spray paint by Rust-Oleum like magic. They're all finished and done drying. And now we're gonna get to work on this one that was pink and striped and also this one with the ridges. I also wanted to show you guys, I did give these a quick spray paint with some beige and those are drying. So I'm gonna get to work now on giving this some age and texture and some dimension. And so for this, I actually ended up using a paint that I'm gonna show you guys. It was the perfect color for just watering down it wasn't too stark and white and i just started out with a paper towel some paint on a paper plate and just sort of mixing them as i applied them to the pot making sure to get lots of extra paint to collect in any kind of crevice now i wanted to get these all done in a weekend and i kept finding different things i wanted to paint around the house so i would recommend taking your time and maybe letting some of this paint settle in for maybe five minutes and then go back and sort of rub it off I didn't and I think it turned out beautifully, but I do think that letting things sit a little bit longer would probably give you a little bit more of the paint left in the crevices. I just wanted to sort of dupe some things that I'd seen by Studio McGee and I think I definitely succeeded. These look so beautiful, so high end. And the best part is it didn't cost me much at all. I think I got that one for maybe $5. Um, and it is quite a good size. Things like this I have seen at places like Home Goods, TJ Maxx, and Target for up to $50. They range between $30, $40, or $50. I just repeated the process on the picture that I did on the vase I showed you guys. It has less real deep bridges, but I think it turned out beautiful. On to our next one. So this is the one that was pink and striped. I actually picked this up for $5 on clearance from Target last summer and I wanted to give it a whole new look. So after spray painting it black and letting it dry, I came in with the same color paint and lots of water, lots of paper towels and just dabbing in the paint to wherever there was a crevice or any kind of imperfection in the surface. Now the good thing about this one is that it already had texture. It just wasn't to my taste being pink with orange stripes. So it was really easy to work the paint in and give it that aged look using some khaki paint. But this one had no texture at all. So I decided to do something I've been wanting to do for years. And I used some Dollar Tree spackle and caulk to create the texture. So I just mixed them. I had them on hand and the 
spackle was too thick and chalky so I added a little bit of water and then I added some of the caulk which was a lot thinner and then that wasn't thick enough so then I added a little bit more spackle it's basically just looking to create the right texture that you want to work with um, it was sort of what would be maybe like melted ice cream or just slightly melted ice cream and then I just used a wooden popsicle stick to spread it on the surface of the pot and then I started patting it in place and then playing around with it and getting it to stick. Now it might have stuck even more effectively if I had maybe taken a sanding block and roughed up the surface of the pot. Um, it turned out wonderful, so I'm not worried about it. I think this turned out really great. I love the texture that this added. So I just kept playing with it. It was actually a whole lot of fun. It reminded me of being a kid and playing with some Play-Doh. Um, you do have to sort of work on certain areas, the handles. I really had to sort of tap the mixture onto to get it to stay in place and then once it was fully dry i actually gave it a spray paint with my favorite color which is heirloom white i'll show that to you guys here in our next diy and um, i just thought that that would help seal some of the plaster and then i came in with a whole lot of water and turned my pot upside down and my brush is really really wet I am mixing black and a really dark brown called burnt umber just getting a little bit of each on the brush each time and then just letting them sort of drip down um, this was also a lot of fun I have to say if you really like art projects you will probably really enjoy this now um, I did have to dab it into a few places on a couple of occasions that it didn't settle in and once this was fully dry I actually decided to give it even more paint just to have it really sealed so I did give a quick black spray paint to it before bringing it in for the magic of this khaki paint um, and lots of water. And so I wanted to create almost like a watermark along the bottom just using my brush to brush on lots of watered down paint in any specific areas where I wanted it to settle as well as along the bottom and brushing the remainder and rubbing it off. And now I have two really beautiful pieces. So the pink one I think turned out really nice. I love that it already had the texture to it so adding the paint was no problem. And I really like this. I think it looks like a relic maybe left back from biblical era i don't know <laughs> i just think it is beautiful i love that it just has so much character and texture i'm so glad i decided to play around with that spackle now you probably could have done less spackle or maybe sanded it down if you wanted a smoother look i love this sort of rusty crusty look um, i did even do slightly on the inside of the lip um, and I love the way the paint settled, especially around the handles and bottom of this piece. It is beautiful. I love it. I'm so happy with it. But let's get on to some of the lighter colored items that I've been working with. So this was actually the large peach colored vase. Um, I did the same thing with the um, caulk and spackle, and I just kind of gave it more of a smooth texture and let that dry then I spray painted it and this time around I'm showing you guys the color I've been working with it's by craft smart and it is called khaki so should be pretty easy to find um, so for this one I turned it upside down and I am using a damp brush but I am just applying a lot of that khaki around the bottom of the pot and then I'm going to use some alcohol that I put in a spray bottle. I wanted to see what it did and it definitely did create sort of um, dips and um, areas where there looks like there could be a little more damage um, and then I just continued to play with it. I just kept painting adding a little bit of white paint to um, the middle section and brushing it together with the khaki to create almost like an ombre look 
that's where most of the texture on this pot settled and so I really wanted to highlight that I also used lots of white around the top so that it would sort of be lighter on the top a little bit darker on the bottom and blended throughout the center of the pot and I did like working with the alcohol although I don't think it's necessary you could definitely just put water in a spray bottle um, it did help to blend a few areas and can I tell you I think this one is my favorite I love this I put it on my island and I just love how those two colors work together and create this I think this looks very much like Studio McGee I just think it's beautiful I love it I love the fact that it's not pure white that there is a little contrast in it and I really do like how the texture settled right there around the middle section of the pot I just think it gives it so much character and it definitely doesn't look like it belongs in the 80s any longer so now I'm gonna work on this one which I didn't even show you guys I picked this up years ago for three dollars on clearance at Ross and I decided to play with plaster of Paris now I'm just gonna say that you don't need to uh, it gave the same effect as the spackle and caulk from the Dollar Tree I just I've been wanting to do this so I played around with it at first it was way too runny and all I wanted to do is build up some texture on this pot it was just way too smooth for my liking and it did take some time for it to thicken up as you can see over time it did eventually thicken now I just played with pouring the plaster of Paris water down with just a little bit of water and letting it thicken up stir let some time pass until it got nice and thick to work with which is what I was looking for and then once it did I actually laid it down on its side and I just started pouring the plaster on it so I would say do these projects where you're trying to add texture outside they were quite messy but being outside made it easy to clean up and then i just started patting on the uh, liquid plaster of paris um, and then i started rubbing it i didn't have any rhyme or reason i'll say rubbing it like this actually creates almost like a wood grain look so i was pretty happy with that i wanted it to be varied so i ended up patting it along the top letting it dry and then also spray painting it outside when I was spray painting these other pieces along with this little one that I added the leftover plaster of Paris to. So I like to use this color. It is by Rust-Oleum and it is called Heirloom White. I love this color. It's an off-white color and I just think it is perfect for Things like this that you're going to be adding pure white to to add some depth. So after spray painting and bringing inside, I did a little bit more of dabbing on some damp white paint. And this is the finished product. I think these turned out great and I didn't have a whole lot of hope for them. Now this little one I love because I love the handles. I love that the plaster of Paris was really thick when I added it on so it did get real kind of crusty and settle in some places and I love this look. Definitely is giving the woman at the well ancient ruins look that I was looking for. So now I'm going to walk you guys through how I did these. So you guys had seen, I showed you that I had spray painted them with some beige. I actually started with one color and the can ran out. I was just using what I had and then I went in with another. So anything in this color family will work and then I'm going back in with my favorite color that khaki and some water I just covered it with lots of paint that was runny and I like to turn the pots upside down while I did this and then a slightly damp paper towel and just pat 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 it's very relaxing you can really sort of zone out and um, I don't know it was just a really relaxing way to spend a weekend working on these jars so once I have it fully covered I just kept working my way around the jar adding more paint more water and then tapping it off where it was needed while one side was drying I was working on the other side and then I would come back around and work back on the other side adding more paint if it was needed 
I will say that I did go back in and add a little bit of paint along the bottom ridge as well as around the top neck of the vessel and the handles and I think that it really helped to settle in to those areas and make them look used and aged and I really am surprised at how well these turned out. I really did not like their look to begin with and I just think they have completely changed. I love the look of them now and it was just a matter of spray painting them with some beige paint and then going back in with some khaki watered down with white they didn't have a ton of texture the pots themselves they had a little bit of variation so you could always go in with some plaster first but i am so truly happy with how these turned out these are now my favorite so i hope you guys enjoyed seeing these trash to treasure thrift store flips that I created treasures out of. Now, I know that even places like Target, Studio McGee can be really expensive. So whether you're looking for things from Pottery Barn or Target or anywhere in between, scour your thrift stores, look for those items on clearance because I'm sure that you can recreate some on your own on a budget. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you back very soon. Mm -hmm.